Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Tom Hiddleston and Marvel dropped a teaser for Loki Season 3 and revealed some of their plans for the future of God Loki, as they're officially calling him at Marvel. And we learned why Loki has not used his God-tier power to kill the Council of Kangs, because it normally would seem like it's a pretty easy thing for him to do if he can control the multiverse that way. And a lot of it's because of how Marvel is changing their plans for Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty in Secret Wars, as a lot of you probably have guessed. Separately, there have been a lot of reports about Marvel changing their plans for Jonathan Majors Kang, just in general. I'll explain what's going on with that. It is a really big deal, and it is pretty late in the game for Marvel as we get closer to Avengers 5. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. The next big Marvel series I'll be doing episode videos for will be What If Season 2. That'll be at the end of this year. We'll get some more trailers for that pretty soon. That'll be very loosely related to what's happening during Loki Season 2, with the multiverse just shifting in such a huge way. Pretty much everything is starting to lead towards Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. Recently, because the strikes ended, all the actors are actually allowed to talk about the show, so Tom Hiddleston was actually allowed to talk about the Loki Season 2 ending in the future of the Loki character. He was asked if the Loki Season 2 ending was his final time as the character, and he basically called it a bookend for his time as Loki like the last 14 years since he was cast in the first Thor movie but then separately was very careful to reiterate that he was not done as the Loki character Loki would return. It all comes full circle. It's the conclusion to season two. It's also the conclusion to seasons one and two. It's also the conclusion to six films and 12 episodes and 14 years of my life. What Ted Paul would say about Loki. I think he'd be withering, although, you know, Loki famously has a silver tongue, so I think he'd give as good as he gets. Written to Kevin Feige and Luis de Esposito, we're always here, you know, you've given us so much. I'd be unwise at this point to be conclusive about any of it. <laughs> That's him basically saying he'll be back in so many words, being kind of secretive about it, so Kevin Feige's Marvel snipers don't destroy him on the spot. Literally, Robert Kirkman was just dropping a whole bunch of spoilers about what's going on with the Sentry and Steven Yoon's character promoting the Invincible show that he's currently working on. But his reasoning for getting away with spoiling what's happening with the Thunderbolts movie in Sentry is that he doesn't actually work for Marvel. So he's like, what are they going to do to me? This is a spoiler or, or anything that'll get anybody in trouble. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. I don't care. I don't work for Marvel. What are they going to do to me? The answer to that would probably be threatening to sue him. But the Loki Season 2 showrunner Kevin Feige also said that the Season 2 finale was not meant to be the same kind of cliffhanger as Season 1. Not that it would be like the last time we'd ever see the character, just that they didn't want there to be a giant question mark at the end, which they were kind of misleading about because there were still a ton of questions at the end of the Loki Season 2 finale. Like, what's going to happen next? They were mostly referring to the fact that Loki wouldn't just like find another Kang behind everything else. Like, they wanted him to deal with He Who Remains and outsmart him and for that to stick. He created a new version of the multiverse fashioned after the world tree he's sitting at its center in that golden throne made from the remains of he who remains citadel at the end of time and his chair holding it all together so all of his friends who themselves are variants can survive in their own timelines. But they didn't want to say that he'd be stuck there on his golden throne at the center of reality for the rest of time just that they wanted him to successfully outsmart he who remains. Then the Loki Season 2 showrunner said that Loki Season 3 had not been written yet, the operative word yet. I think it's interesting that Loki never comes up, ne never comes face to face with Spider-Man. Yeah, Loki, Loki and Strange is an interesting matchup, I think. The producers said that they did plan to reunite this version of Loki with the main version of Thor eventually. And they did confirm that they're basing this new Loki more on God of Stories Loki, being able to jump around in his own timeline, but obviously the MCU version being a little bit different from the comic book version. And basically that Loki would be back in Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty and during Secret Wars. It's kind of the same plan that they have for the Scarlet Witch character, like they have this really big final seeming moment for the character, but there's a big question mark about their future at Marvel, but really what they're doing is just giving them like a short break and then waiting for like the next big Avengers movie to bring them back in a much bigger way. So really Loki season three wouldn't happen until all that Avengers stuff winds up going down. And a lot of the events of Loki season three would just spin out of how they wind up ending Secret Wars. We know there's going to be some kind of soft reboot at Marvel. Kevin Feige's going to fix any continuity issues, recast whoever he wants to recast, and bring everybody into a single continuity so that the new MCU going forward looks more like the true comic book 616 universe where everybody's coexisted in the same universe the whole time. And here's where we get to the issue of why Loki, or the god version of Loki, has not killed the Council of Kangs yet with all of his power. 
a lot of it has to do with Marvel's changing plans for Avengers 5 and Avengers 6, mostly the villains in those movies. Most of you probably saw the reports separately that the Disney CEO Bob Iger was personally putting his thumb on the scale, so to speak, and will make Kevin Feige recast Jonathan Majors regardless of what happens with his upcoming trial. It doesn't matter whether he's found innocent or guilty. Either way, apparently the major money people, like a level above Kevin Feige, who give all the Marvel people their marching orders, are just tired of all the headaches and the drama that come from Jonathan Majors. But generally, the belief is that Marvel has invested way too much time in leading up to Avengers 5 as Kang Dynasty for them to completely change what Avengers 5 winds up being. A lot of you also thought that they might just wind up absolutely canceling Kang Dynasty and making Avengers 5 just like a larger version of Secret Wars. That's not totally out of the cards, but things would have to get way, way worse behind the scenes for them to do something that major. They just delayed all their movies that are happening next year except for Deadpool 3, meaning that Avengers 5 would not be able to happen until 2026 and Secret Wars wouldn't be able to happen until 2027. So at least right now without things getting way, way worse at Marvel, the report is they'll just recast Jonathan Majors and proceed with Avengers 5 as a version of Kang Dynasty, meaning the Avengers versus the Council of Kangs, which is the real reason why the new god Loki hasn't killed the Council of Kangs with his power because they still plan on doing a larger version of the Kang multiverse war in Kang Dynasty with several versions of the character just played by a different actor. In universe though, the story reason, like the logical reason why Loki didn't kill all the Kang variants is because the Council of Kangs exists in a pocket dimension outside of time the same way the TVA did and Loki could really only affect things inside those timelines. So in order for him to use his power to kill the Council of Kangs, he'd have to have left the chair and entered the actual dimension where the Council of Kangs is located, and that would have caused the timeline branches in the multiverse to die again, and they weren't going to do that literally right after he sat down in the chair and fixed the multiverse. My early theory about how they actually get him out of the chair, because he'll have to get out of the chair for Avengers 5, is they just say the Council of Kangs starts going around blowing up different timelines with Avengers in them to slowly kill all the Avengers, and Loki starts feeling it through the timeline that branches in his chair. There's this line in Norse mythology about the actual world tree itself. Basically, when the world tree shakes, it means that Ragnarok is upon them again. So think of Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty, this battle against the Council of Kangs, is like a much larger cosmic version of Ragnarok than actual Thor Ragnarok. Loki will be sitting there in his chair and all of a sudden he'll feel the branches of the timeline, the world tree, literally start shaking and dying around him. They'll give him a version of the scene they gave the Hulk at the beginning of Avengers Infinity War where he goes to the main version of Thor, warns him about what's happening, and they assemble the new Avengers. Then I do believe that they plan on like completely moving past the whole concept of Kang at the end of Avengers 5, like they will kill the Council of Kangs, whoever winds up being the villain of Avengers 6. There were reports they might just pivot to Doctor Doom. It could totally wind up being a different character, like a more comic book accurate version of the Beyonder, because they are basing Secret Wars on both of the comic book versions of Secret Wars, the classic version from the 1980s and the more modern version. But pending the resolution of Secret Wars, the creation of a new more comic book accurate multiverse with a bunch more X-Men, they just use Loki Season 3 to sort of explain how Loki helps reform this new version of the multiverse with the soft reboot that Marvel is doing. At the end of the more recent Secret Wars, they let Reed Richards and Franklin Richards be the ones to do that. They helped recreate the multiverse. They can just say that God Loki is the person to do that in the MCU. That's basically what he's kind of doing during Loki Season 2. He's basically reforming the multiverse. You could just have him being a bigger part of how they do that during Avengers 6 Secret Wars. Let me know in the comments, if Marvel does recast Jonathan Majors, how do you want them to end Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty, and who do you want the villain of Avengers 6 Secret Wars to be? Doctor Doom would be cool if they can actually develop the character well enough before that movie happens, but if they are having to delay all their movies so much, then we'll all be old men and old women before Secret Wars winds up happening anyway, so theoretically they do have a lot of time to develop the Doctor Doom character. Apparently, they just talked to Maz Mikkelsen about being Doctor Doom in the MCU, which actually be a pretty solid choice. I'll do more videos about all those different things when we get more information. It's still pretty early days right now, like the strike just ended, so they just ramped up production on all these different movies and all these different shows. It's kind of like Kevin Feige just like ran into all their production studios and started flipping the lights on back again and started rousting everybody, get back to work, start making our stuff again. Like I said, the What If Season 2 episodes will be coming at the end of the year. It'll be like an advent calendar with like a new episode every single day. It'll be interesting to try and get all those videos out in a timely manner. 
Click here for the brand new trailer video for that and click here for my Loki season two, episode six finale video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.